What's up, ladies and gents? I'm your host, Industrial One. Welcome to another walkthrough. This time we are playing the remastered version of Resident Evil. That is right. This is the remastered version of the GameCube remake of the original Resident Evil 1. Hopefully you guys can understand that. So, Resident Evil 1 came out, you know, quite a long time ago. About 19 years ago, I guess. And then they uh, decided to do a remake for the GameCube, which was not an HD remake, just up-res graphics uh, from what they had on the PlayStation 1. So this, of course, is the HD um, up-mastered graphics of the GameCube. So that is why, hopefully that's not confusing anybody, but I just wanted to, to get that out there. So I'm going to be playing this on PC. Originally, I had wanted to do a 4K walkthrough of this, but it is impossible to do 4K for the PC version. The highest that you can actually get as you can see, it's 2560 by 1600 because I have a 4K G-Sync monitor. However, we're going to play in 1080 because I want to put this game out in 60 frames a second. And if I did it in 2K, you can't do 60 frames a second on YouTube. So I was like, well, you know, I want to give you guys uh, what I feel is what the, the game should be played on. is what the, the developers want you to play it on. You know, they made this for 1080 with 60 frames a second. And I want to be able to give that to you guys. Everything else is, of course, up to the max for your viewing pleasure. Now, um, this is going to be a walkthrough, so I will be showing you how to get certain things. This is not a speed walkthrough or anything like that. So, uh, you know, don't expect me to be rushing through the areas, but I will definitely be showing you some cool tricks and some cool things to do. I am nowhere near an expert when it comes to playing this game. Uh, of course, I played the GameCube version and I played the original a lot back in the day, but it has been a long time. So just, you know, sit back, relax, and enjoy some Resident Evil with me. I'll let you guys look at some of the controls here. We're going to be playing with the 360 controller. And we're also going to be doing this with the alternate controls. You can use the tank controls with the D-pad and use the alternate controls with the thumb sticks. So hopefully you guys are going to enjoy. Again, don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe, and it's time for Resident Evil. Resident Evil. All right, so as I said before, you can actually choose uh, how you want to display this game. You can do it in the original uh, original setting, which is the 4-3 aspect ratio. The game is still in a 4-3 aspect ratio, even if you have it on wide. However, the camera will zoom in and zoom out depending on where you are in the pre-described uh, location, because of course this is pre-rendered scenes, so you have a one, at one camera angle, and then it switches here and there, but it'll zoom in or zoom out depending on where you are to give you that uh, full 16 by 9, even though it still is in its original 4.3 aspect ratio. And of course, we're going to choose alternate and subtitles on. So because I'm not the expert, you know, Resident Evil uh, player, I'm more of a casual Resident Evil fan, you know, it's taken me a while to figure out what I want to do. I want to do it on the hardest difficulty setting that it gives you out of the bag, which is I like climbing a mountain, fulfilling, but takes a lot of work. But we're actually going to play this on, we're going to take a hike, okay? We're going to get some good exercise, but it's not going to be too strenuous on our thighs and our legs. We want to work the glutes, but not too much, you know, because we're, this is the beginning of the year. This is our New Year's resolution. We want to get back up there uh, in tip-top shape. And you want to start out slow. So that's my excuse for doing it on this. Plus, I want to make sure we have fun and we don't, <laughs> we don't die too much. So another big decision that I had to come up with was choosing if I wanted to be Chris or Jill. Now, of course, my name is Chris, so all of you would think, oh, he's going to choose Chris. However, I'm going to go with Jill because Jill to me is, um, I, love, I love playing the female characters in Resident Evil. And there's not a lot of games out there in particular that have the female lead characters. And I want to play as Jill for that reason. Um, if you guys would also like to see the Chris walkthrough, please let me know in the comments below. Like the video, show support for it and everything like that, and uh, we might be able to do that as well. There are two separate campaigns for this game. Uh, the same areas, just kind of different ways to go about them and different things to do, different characters to interact with and all that stuff. So I'm done talking. I've talked forever. We are going to be doing this in her BSAA uniform. You can actually choose the BSAA uniforms, which are really cool, taken from Resident Evil 5, as I show, as this to me shows that Jill's a badass and she's ready to get in there and uh, kick some ass. So hopefully you guys will enjoy. Again, I will be as informative as I can when it comes to the game. I won't be talking during the cutscenes or anything like that, and I'm ready to do this. It's go time. Alpha team is flying around the forest zone, situated in northwest Raccoon City, where we are searching for the helicopter of our compatriots, Bravo team. 
disappeared during the middle of their mission. Bizarre murder cases have recently occurred in Raccoon City. There are outlandish reports of families being attacked by a group of about ten people. Victims were apparently eaten. The Bravo team was sent in to investigate, but we lost contact. Look, Chris! Bravo team's helicopter was a derelict. Save for the remaining body of Kevin. We continued our search for the other members, and it turned into a nightmare. this way. Enter the survival horror. There are only three STARS members left now. Captain Wesker, Barry, and myself. We don't know where Chris is. What is this place? Not quite your ordinary house, that's for sure. Hey, Whisker, where's Chris? Jill, no. You don't want to go back out there. But we've got to find... What was that? Chris? No. Jill, go and investigate. I'm going with her. Chris and I go back a long way. All right. You two go. I'll secure this area. Stay sharp. <clears throat> a dining room. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. First things up, as you can see, there's an ink ribbon right here. So we're going to go ahead and pick that up. I won't be picking up a lot of things as we really won't be needing some things along in this walkthrough. But actually, if you go ahead and head back out where you came from, you can get another tiny cinema with Wesker as he is one of my favorite villain characters of all time. That gunfire. I'm counting on you to investigate, Jill. Sure thing, Wesker. And of course, you know, I'm assuming that most of you out there know all about Resident Evil. It's been around for 20 years, just about, so uh, there might be spoilers throughout. But uh, as you can see, you know, the controls are really easy to use. It's more of kind of the modern area of controls. If you want to use the tank controls, you can use the D-pad and you're able to back up 
forward and all that. You can't back up with the directional, or excuse me, you can't back up with the, the thumb pad, but you can with the directional pad, so. A picture of two knights striking each other. The short sword has been thrust into the breast of one knight while the long sword has pierced the head of the other. These are some violent people, I'm telling you. I think you'd better take a look at this. What is it? Blood. Jill, see if you can find any other clues. I'll be examining this. Let's just hope it's not Chris's. So you can actually interact with Barry again. Barry. That's about all that happens. Uh, notice the improvement in the textures and stuff. There's definitely been an upgrade in that. As everything does look a lot sharper than the GameCube version. Obviously. <laughs> but uh, there's really nothing else you can do in this room. There is a little emblem thing here that you can uh, pick up right there. But we don't really need it. So we're going to move on. One thing I also love about the original Resident Evils is the eeriness, you know, just the feeling of going through these doors and the blackness and stuff is really kind of intimidating, really gets you in that mood. So make sure when you're watching this, you've got those lights off and you've got some headphones on. I'll try not to scream like a little girl. Such an iconic part in this game. There's no real reason to fight him, as even if we kill him uh, when we exit here, there's still going to be a cinema with him. So just go ahead and let Barry take care of him for now. Barry! What is it? Look out! It's a monster! Let me take care of it! hell is this thing? I found Kenneth killed by this thing. Let's report this to Wesker. So I would say the Jill campaign is a little bit easier because Barry is definitely your protector in this, whereas Chris, you're more on your own, learning things on your own. So, but uh, I really like the chemistry between Barry and Jill, and just playing Jill in general. Kind of, they're they're two different types of walkthroughs, so. Looks like we haven't heard the last of him. Wesker! Jill, help me look for him. Let's not leave this hall. Good idea. So put yourself back in 2002 and imagine that this was the best looking game during that time period. And it really was, even though that these are all pre-rendered rooms and everything like that. It really was a great looking game, you know, in the context, Metal Gear Solid 2 had just come out the year before. So uh, really amazing game. If you want to go quickly into the next cutscene, you can go up the stairs and head back down. Otherwise, you're going to need to go around. There are two different ways you can trigger the cutscene by going all the way around as we're going to do or just going up the stairs and back down. Now another thing to note that when you're using the alternate controls, whenever you go into a new cutscene, no matter what direction you're pressing, um, you'll still continue to go the direction that you were going earlier. It's a little confusing and you might see me stop every now and then to reorient the controls because every time you go into a new one, it changes. So just keep that in mind as the alternate controls do take a little bit of time to get used to since we're all used to the tank controls. Barry. Any luck, Jill? No, nothing. What's going on around here? I can't figure it out. Same here. Chris, and now Wesker. There's not much we can do. We can search for him separately. I'll investigate the dining room again. Okay, then. I'll try the door on the other side. <sighs> this mansion is gigantic. We could easily get lost. Let's start from the first floor. Okay. Oh! I almost forgot. It's a lockpick. You'd make better use of it. Aha, I am the master of unlocking. Thanks. I may need it. Listen, 
If something happens, let's meet up in this hall. Got it? Okay. There's going to be a lot of going back and forth between different places, a lot of backtracking and things. So just kind of get used to that in this game. But what's really cool is you can actually exit here. There'll be a little cinema that plays. A dog will come in and then you'll have to fight off the dog. But there's really no reason to do that. We're actually going to go ahead and head back in here. Uh, you won't see Barry anymore in here, even though he is supposed to be going into here. The uh, That clock is just so unsettling. Like as I said, you'll see me twitch every now and then. That's when I'm trying to re, you know, reacquaint my fingers into the proper area. Right now, we're going to go ahead and pick up this tape, and later we're going to be able to watch a video of what happened to Kenneth. So, I'm going to go ahead and pick that up. Always got to be facing the door whenever you want to enter it. Controls are very, uh, very easy to use and fluid. And you can move very slow or you can run. You don't have to press a certain button to run anymore, which is really cool. Now you do if you use the tank controls at the bottom because you're with the direction pad. You can run if you use the X button. So it's really up to you depending on how you want to play it. If you're wanting to dodge enemies, then you'll want to use the tank controls because then you can do the old kind of back up slowly and then work yourself around to be able to do that. So as you'll see, I'll stop every now and then sometimes just to to get reacquainted but I really do like the alternate controls and the fact that I can use either one at any time I think really uh, is a good option I'm glad that they made it that way so you see there's a dead body here we don't have to worry about him right now you can see there is a zombie right there and he'll start heading towards you here uh, really we'll go ahead and take him out now we're not gonna kill him just wait till he's down um, obviously when you kill enemies uh, they will come back as the crimson zombies and those guys are able to run and move around and do different things and you don't want to mess with them so you want to go ahead and pick up this arrow I'm gonna select it examine it and we can take just the top portion giggity thing about hand or about the, the ammunition is that it adds to something that's already in an inventory slot so you don't have to use another slot for that item some items are like that but others you will have to have separate ones like like health items and things like that so we'll go ahead and pick up this dagger these daggers are going to be great they're kind of like a one hit kill not really a kill but they make it to where you can uh, escape damage from enemies there is a blue item in here that you can get, but we don't really need it right now, so we're going to continue on. We're going to go outside and use that arrowhead that we got. I'll try to put a couple of parts out a day for this as this is uh, one of those kind of walkthroughs where it does take time to remember where everything is. so. And it has been a long time since I've played this. I love some of the, the camera angles. I'm going to go ahead and use this. Now these are part of the missions that we have to do. Uh, it's all about uh, the death masks and all that kind of stuff. So This game is just so creepy. It definitely still has some of the best atmosphere in any survival horror. Between this and Resident Evil 4, you know. I'm going to pick up this book. We're going to go ahead and examine it as well. And turn it around. And we have the all-encompassing key. Book of Curses. The Four Masks. A mask that speaks no evil, smells no evil, sees no evil, hears no evil. A mask that cannot speak, smell, or see evil. When all four fall into place, evil will awaken. See a little flicker there? That's what I. That's what I moved from being at the uh, holding down to holding up. 
It's crazy. Shotgun is our best friend, so we're going to go ahead and pick up the shotgun shells. Then just keep pushing in that same direction that you're going in, and you won't ever have to worry about not going straight. Then you can reacquaint yourself once you get to the point where you need to actually turn. Alright, so we've done what we needed to do, and now we're going to head over to the other side. Going to break on through to the other side. It's Jill sandwich time. Alright, there's a map that you can pick up there, but we don't really need it right now. And if you went to the other side where that thing was, that you can actually get another dagger, which we'll probably pick up a little bit later. These daggers, like I said, are very important as they do help us in dire need. Ooh, a little scary. And myself, I like to pick up uh, as much ammunition as possible just in case I do get into a little bit of trouble because I am nowhere near an expert in this game. And this is not a speed run, so... I remember games that copied this. Look at that. Great, amazing graphics. I love it. And I remember the games that copied this game, uh, like Dino Crisis. I remember playing that, and it had the whole like kind of tank controls and all that kind of stuff, too. Really fun stuff. Hey, doggy. We'll need this a little bit later. We can pick it up now. Oh yes, one of my favorite parts. Remove the plug. Now, of course, when you're playing with Chris, you know, you'll go through these same rooms, however, things will be a little different. She automatically kills a zombie, whereas Chris would actually have, you would have to do it yourself. So it's a little different depending on who you choose. But, um, yeah, so Jill gets, like, kind of special things, I guess. She's special. that time for a Jill sandwich. Alright, so it looks like we got another dagger. We're going to pick that up. And it seems we have some more ink ribbons. Now, if you were Chris, you would need the uh, fake, or not the fake, but the old shotgun to replace this with. However, we're able to do a get out of jail free card with Jill, so. What are we gonna do? Oh God, what did I do now? Wesker! Barry! Help! Jill! You in there? Barry? Get me out of here! The door's jammed! Stand back! <clears throat> Grab my hand! 
Barry. That was a close one. A second late, you would have fit nicely into a sandwich. A Jill sandwich. Really? Thanks. But Barry, didn't you say you were going back to the dining room to find other clues? I'm glad and all, but why are you here? I just had something I wanted to check. Anyway, we should get back to searching for Wesker and Chris. Thanks, Barry. I owe you one. Don't mention it. All right. Well, there you go. So ooh, we got an achievement. What a great guy. Barry is such a great guy. He's my hero. Me and Barry are like, boom. We're like brother and sister. Let's see. I can't remember what's in here. I'm still trying to remember this game, too. You know, it's been such a long time. All right. I don't know where we are. So the thing with these guys is wait till they get about right on the stairs. And then you can get by them pretty easily. Uh, those are the vomiters. Uh, you don't have to take too much damage with them. So we have our first, looks like our first save room. All right. Now this, we'll go ahead and pick it up. This is a kerosene bottle. As you can see, we can't carry it right now. But with this bottle, this actually lets you uh, destroy the zombies for those that you accidentally kill. Figure, well, ah, that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to grab the magazine, but we'll get it in just a second. So we're going to turn in something right now. Let's turn in... Uh, we're going to turn in the handgun, which means we don't need the handgun magazine. We'll keep the shotgun out. We'll keep the ink ribbon out. Uh, there's still a few more things that we need to pick up upstairs, and we'll go ahead and get that right now. Uh, I keep doing the wrong one. There we go. Alright, so let's turn that back in. Like I said, we don't need any of that just yet. And there's a few items that we need to get upstairs. There's the kerosene right there that you can use to fill your little container. Make sure you stay away from that guy there. Let's go ahead and equip our shoddy. Oh, I did not expect to see that guy there. That was a close one. That's exactly why you want... Uh, see, like I said, I'm still trying to remember where all the enemies are. It's been such a long time doing this off memory. I've played, you know, I, I kind of played a little bit to get used to the controls again. And it's, um, it takes a little bit of time. All right, so in here, let's see, we've got the dog whistle is exactly what we need. The dog whistle is going to make it, and it actually tells you where you need to go, is what we need in order to get the thing that we need to continue on. So, and this just kind of goes through uh, the dog whistle. And as far as anything else, let's see what else is in here. And the lighter, we'll go ahead and pick up the lighter. Um... I mean, you don't really need it. There's going to be a guard out. Or not a guard. <laughs> I said a guard. There's going to be a guy out here. And you got this guy. So if you just wait a little bit. Fail. Big time. That's alright though. I mean, that's what we have the daggers for. So it really doesn't matter. We are going to be going back upstairs. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and put the lighter away. The 
dog whistle we still need, and eh, we don't really need the survival knife right now. And I think this is go ahead and good place to save. Uh, what we're going to be doing next is we're going to be using the dog whistle to grab that item, and then we're going to be heading over to the other side. Uh, and yeah, we got some more fun stuff up ahead. So hopefully you guys are going to hopefully you guys are enjoying the walkthrough. Again, I apologize; it's been a while since I played this game, but it's great to get back into it. And uh, think hopefully you guys are going to enjoy it. Uh, this is going to be an awesome walkthrough, and I want to thank everyone out there for what you do for the channel. So we will see you next time. I'm your host, Sinistrain01. Peace out, bitches.